Bonjour everyone, welcome to the Magpie Channel TV for the match preview of our game on Sunday at Old Trafford in the Premier League, Manchester United versus Newcastle United, 7 o'clock kickoff. Shout out to our sponsor, Spider VPN. before we get into it. Links in the description to everything they do down there, so go and check them out, guys. We are joined by Mr. Aaron United. How are we doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, sweet man. It's good to see you as always. Been linking up for a while now. Yeah. Last time we spoke was for the match preview for the game back in October, which mm -hmm. finished a 4-1 win for Man United, which we'll not get into because I'm still foaming about those last <laughs> those last 10 minutes of yeah. self-destruction. <laughs> but yeah, last time we spoke, neither one of us were very happy with our managerial situation. Mm. Since then, uh, we were still not, but since then... You've gone top of the league, and yeah. you're cur currently in second at the minute. What's changed, and has your opinion on Oli changed in that time? My opinion on Oli hasn't changed. It's still the same. I still think there are a lot of things that he's done well off the pitch in terms of making sure, maybe you can say on the pitch as well, in terms of keeping everyone happy, that's one. It's been a very long time we've had a manager that literally kept everyone happy mm -hmm. with whether it's the playing time, whether it's uh when they play what types of games they play like how many games they play like it's been a long time we've had a manager like this but i still think there are a lot of errors that he makes too many basic errors that you'd expect a manager not to make when you consider he's been a management for over what 12 years now he started managing in 2009 started managing our reserves managed the likes of pogba lingard mm -hmm. um obviously rashford was still a kid back then um, so he knows, he should know, should I say, what it takes to be a good manager by making just, by getting the basic things right. Um, we've gone top of the league because we score a lot of goals and we've got players that can make the difference at any given moment. We've seen it in, in our game against you guys. For a long period of time, it looked like you guys were kind of hanging on, but mm -hmm. then, boom, individual brilliance, the Wan-Bissaka goal, but to be fair, you ain't never scoring that again. Um <laughs> Wan Bissaka goal, and that's not me taking anything away from him because I, I think he's a good defender. Yeah, the Wan Bissaka goal, the Bruno goal, they were all to be fair. The Bruno goal was a counter attack, and that's one of the things that I've been very cr critical of. We score the same types of goals, which is not wrong, but it's because of we, we, we always rely on that particular thing. If it's not a counter attack, it's a penalty, sometimes a set piece, which happened against you guys, Maguire. Mm -hmm. Um. And yeah, man, I just think it's not sustainable because we, we get away with a lot, you know, because of our individual brilliance. There were a lot of games where if we don't if we don't get a decision for us, then it will be like a, a moment of magic. Um, bright in a way. There's no way we should get a penalty <laughs> after full time. No way. Yeah. No way. We still get it somehow. We score, we win 3-2. Against West Brom, we were very mediocre at home. We get the penalty, Bruno scores, we win. Against Fulham, very mediocre, couldn't break them down. Pogba with a wonder goal, we win 1-0. Same against Burnley. Rashford puts in a cross, Pogba with a wonder volley, we win 1-0. And it's, again, Wolves at home, struggle to break them down. Individual brilliant. Rashford shoots with his left, it gets deflected, we win 1-0. <laughs> 2-1 against a Villa. Again, individual brilliance. I can't, I can't remember who scored. I think it must have been a Bruno penalty or something. And then that last-ditch last, last ditch block of Bay against um, Davis in the end. Again, so it's not sustainable because a lot of people think by doing this, you're getting away with it, but it never catches up. Whereas in football, it will catch up with you yeah. at some point. And it did against Leipzig. It did against PSG. It did against Istanbul. And ultimately, we paid the price. We're out of the Champions League now. We're playing on Thursdays. We're back to Thursday, Sundays. And I've always said that that's going to kill us, man. Mm -hmm. That is complete. We're already tomorrow, we're all, without Cavani, uh, Van der Beek, Pogba. I think there's another one that's injured. So already the injuries are kicking in. So my, my opinion on Oli hasn't changed. I think he still needs to go. Well, now we're going to have to ride it out to the end of the season. We've got no choice. We just have to hope for the best, really, because... <laughs> He can get it right one day, but then the next week can, he can get it completely wrong. So, yeah, man, it's, it's been a ride, man, since we last played <laughs> you guys. We're second now, bottled two games. 
the title looks for me like it's done. I think City are going to run run away yeah, with it. Looks like um, it. So, yeah, man. Obviously, we'll see what they do tonight against Everton. If they win, yeah, we can forget <laughs> about it. But I think, personally, we should just focus on top four right now. Focus on top four over the league? Like, I know like Man City's running away with it, but is it is a game over now? Do you not think you're going to catch them? I think it's going to be tough, man. It's... it's because Oli said in one of his press conferences, we still have to play against City. Yeah, but even if we win against them, I don't think that will knock their confidence because mm-hmm. I've always said, even when when they were like, was it sixth, seventh or eighth? I said, once these guys get going, yeah. nobody's going to be able to stop them. <laughs> and look at them now, 16 games unbeaten, 15, 16 games unbeaten. That's crazy, man. So yeah, I think you can stop them, but it's tough to stop them because they've got such a good team, bro. And defensively, they're looking really solid as, solid mm-hmm. as well. Uh, what you were saying about uh, Oli before, about like the look running out and just having that look, it sounds like a higher scale level of Steve Bruce. Like he's been <laughs> he's been riding a wave of luck for the last year, year and a half, but since December, pretty much that look's gone clean out of the window. Yeah. The last couple of games, like the Everton Palace and Southampton game, despite losing to Crystal Palace, were played really, really well. But those are three games out of the blue. Mm. What awful against Chelsea, and before that, we would, would lost like each of them were like eleven games prior to that. Like his his look was is clean out of the window. Like what's mm. been your take on Newcastle at the, in the last few weeks? Yeah, man, I I feel for you guys that you, I and I understand that you guys are not asking for qualify for Europe or to qualify <laughs> to qualify for Europe or to win the league or none of these things. You guys are just asking for good football, entertaining mm-hmm. football. And you're not getting that at the minute. As as a Manchester United fan looking looking at the situation from outside, it hurts me to see like you've got a good squad, man. You can do mm-hmm. good mm-hmm. things with this squad. You've got a good striker, obviously he's out now, but you've got a good striker. Um you've got good backup strikers to be honest. Yeah. Um, you've got wingers. Like, I don't know how you cannot do normal stuff with this squad. Like, I just think Steve Bruce looks completely, but absolutely completely clueless, man. He doesn't know what he's doing, <laughs> honestly. He does not know what he's doing. Like, obviously, I watch the games without the, the artificial fan noise. So, I sometimes I focus on what the managers are saying. Yeah. And it's just the same generic, like, Go on, son. Go on. Like it's the same mm-hmm. generic thing. Like you're not given any specific instructions, and I don't know, man. I, I don't know how these guys keep getting away with it and just <laughs> keep getting jobs every single year. I don't know how they do it. It's crazy. I, I can't understand it. But I've been looking a little bit better with the appointment of Graham Jones from Bournemouth. He seems to be a man that actually understands tactics, unlike yeah. Steve Bruce. So I think that's the reason why we've been playing a little bit better. But we couldn't do it against Chelsea. I think. Steve Bruce and Newcastle in general shit the bed against top six teams like Everton, Palace, Southampton. Everton and Southampton have had decent seasons, but yeah. they've been in up and down. Like we just played away to Chelsea, awful. And yeah. coming up, coming to another game at Old Trafford where we haven't won since 2013. Mm-hmm. It's probably just going to be more of the same. I'm looking at some stats here yeah, in our last five games at Old Trafford. We've lost four and drawn one. That was nil nil. But there's been there's been goals in each of them, mainly for you. <laughs> like, yeah. There's, there's been two four ones, a three one, and a three two. So there's mm. usually goals in these fixtures at Old Trafford between us. Yeah, man. Um I mean, we haven't I mean we've won against you guys at Old Trafford, but the way we started has, has not been good in the last what mm-hmm. two years. I think we've gone ahead each of the yeah. last two last each of the last two seasons, yeah. Last season, you went ahead. Um, Matty Longstaff. Matty Longstaff scored. Yeah. The celebration was a piss take. <laughs> <laughs> the celebration, because I was there. The celebration was a piss take at Old Trafford. Um, the year before that, uh, you guys went ahead twice, what, actually. You went what, ahead 2 0. Well, 2 0 up at half time, yeah. Yeah, you 2 0 up at half time. I was there as well. That game was horrible. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. That was, that was when Mourinho was there. It was a. Te- the, yeah, it was. Because we were singing, yeah, getting I've sacked seen. in the morning. Yeah, that, was, that made things even worse. Like, and I was sat very high up, so I could see wh- what the team shape was like. It was just terrible, man. We literally had to dig deep and get this win. And out of all people, it was Alexis Sanchez who got the winner. Yeah, um, it was. 
So, yeah, man, we've never really started well against you guys. And that's been our biggest problem this season as well, starting games well. We've seen it against West Brom. We went down to, what, after 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. It's just, no, not, what am I saying? It's after two minutes, it's two, like three two, minutes. Two minutes, yeah. Went down, um, even last, last season when we played you guys at um, St. James's, we went down as well. We no, always yeah. go down first and we have to come back. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, it it's... was this season as well, wasn't it? It was a sh short own goal after about two minutes in the there fall one. Yeah. There you go, because we don't, we're not focused from the start. Mm -hmm. We're always, do you know what it is? I think we're so much relying on our individual brilliance that even when we do go down, we're just like, oh, it's fine. We'll come back anyway. We've got Bruno, <laughs> we've got Pogba, we've got X, Y, Z. We'll come back. Don't worry. Yeah. But it's, it's not always going to work. It's not, it, it can work yeah. against certain teams in the Premier League. Like I said, when you go to that higher level in the Champions League, you'll just get punished. Yeah, you'll get punished. But, yeah, Bruno's been the difference, like hasn't he? Like, he, I think you'd be pretty fucked without him at the minute. Yeah, no, nah, that's you have to give him his props, man. Even though I mm. think there's a lot of things that he does that frustrate me, you have to give him his his flowers, man. He's been so instrumental in so many games. Has won us games that he shouldn't we shouldn't have won. Uh, won us games that we should have drawn. Like the guy is just inevitable. Like whenever you need him, he's there. He scores or assists. So mm -hmm. you can't deny that. Do you know what I mean? But sometimes I can't lie. He goes missing as well in certain games. Goes missing, misplaces passes, and he's been one of the vocal players saying that you can't always rely on coming back. And he's right. Even though he's been the one saving mm -hmm. us all the time, he's right. You can't keep going down one nil or two nil against teams and then thinking, oh, Bruno will do the job. Because what happens if Bruno has an off day? Yeah. Who's, who's, who's going to take the game by the scruff of the neck? Or who's going to step up and say, okay, we're going to win this game? Because it happens. It can happen to anyone. Anyone can have an off day. Anyone. So yeah. what happens if that day you're down 2 nil and you're relying on Bruno to save you, but then Bruno has an off day? What happens? It got to the point where, I can't remember what game it was, at half time, there was a bus stop in the changing rooms where Bruno was having a go at Matic and Maguire because the defending was just shocking. Mm -hmm. To the point where a fight nearly broke out. Well, that's what reports are saying. But I believe it happened because Bruno never came out for the second half. Got taken off. Um, I think Matic got subbed off as well. So th the mentality has to change. So yeah, man. It's, it's just um, certain games will look good. Certain games will just look really average. And then Bruno <laughs> just, boom, pops up with a goal. Like the West Brom goal. That was just out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. He seems to have a good captain mentality, Bruno, though. Like you say, like, he's not afraid to tell people... If that's shit, yeah, shit, sort it out. But even <laughs> yeah. when even when celebrating goals and stuff, I've seen him like take a step back and start giving instructions. Like instead of celebrating for too long, it's like right, regroup. You do this, you do that, which mm -hmm. is which is kind of good to say. I wish we had a few more players with that kind of mentality. Yeah, and I think for me, even though it's his first season, I feel like he maybe next season or the season after he deserved the captain's armband because mm -hmm. I think he's way more of a leader than Maguire is. I think Maguire's. He's a decent defender, but he's not a leader. And I think United are trying to force, or Man United are trying to force this leadership thing with Maguire. It's just not working, yeah. in my opinion. I just don't think he's a leader. I don't think he's vocal enough. And I just think he's too soft, even in the, in the post-match interviews. Too much generic stuff. Uh, we'll go again. It wasn't our day. Uh, the referees. like Just making up a lot of excuses and sometimes it's getting annoying. Like, sometimes we just need a captain to come out and say we weren't good enough. Mm -hmm. There's no shame in that. No shame. If you weren't yeah. good enough, you weren't good enough. Like, at least you're being honest with yourself and the fans instead mm -hmm. of lying to us on TV and talking about no team goes to there's no team goes to West Brom and creates over 10 chances. And then there's a stat that came out, ironically, saying that every <laughs> team that has been to the Hawthorns this season in the Premier League has created over 10 chances. So... That sounds it's, like yeah. Steve Bruce's post-match <laughs> conferences. That guy is full of shit. <laughs> That's another thing. Steve Bruce's press conference is just mad. Uh, he just makes stuff up as he goes. I'm just thinking, did you really just say that? <laughs> <laughs> now you know how we feel, Jesus Christ. Honestly, yeah. I'll, I'll stop watching them. It's fucking embarrassing. I can't even bear looking the guy in the face. <laughs> but you, you touched on some of your form lately. There's been some inconsistencies i'm looking at your last five games you've won one lost one that one being the bottom team sheffield united others being draws against arsenal everton and west brom mm -hmm. the one saving grace in them five games is the nine nil demolition of southampton yeah 
Uh, <laughs> what's going on at the minute? How do you see Man United playing at the minute? Like you say, we've, you've got um, Sociedad coming up in the Europa League tomorrow as well. Yeah, um, the way I'm seeing us playing at the minute is we rely heavily on teams to leave spaces in behind so we can counter-attack because that's our strongest attribute. We've got um, pacey players, uh, technically good players. So we always have to hope for a counter-attack or a goal out of the blue to to win a game or to, to just score, to be honest. Um, so the way I'm seeing us play right now is looking probably good to some people, but I just think it can be effective, but in the long term, it's not sustainable because not every team is going to give you those spaces in behind. And you spoke about the 9-0. Yes, it was it was really good. Don't get me wrong. I was very happy for us to score nine goals because sometimes even when a team go, goes down, even when a team goes down to 10 men, you still struggle to break them down because they're defensively so compact and stuff. But we managed to put nine past them. Um, but it's not always going to happen. And it's almost like we have to, like I said, we have to hope and pray that a team leaves spaces in behind so we can score or like Leeds, like when they came to Old Trafford, they just left mm-hmm. everything open. To, <laughs> like we scored six past them with 11 men. So because they were just, they didn't care about conceding. It looked like it. Yeah. So when a team is literally um, sitting back and parking the bus, we struggle to open in, opening these teams up. And I fear that if that's, if that's going to be your approach, I, I don't know. It could be nil-nil till like the 70th minute. Mm-hmm. It could be nil-nil till the 70th minute. That's kind of how I predicted the Chelsea game would go. Like we spoke with uh, Louis Beneventi before his mm. game, and he said the same thing. Like th- the way they set up, if we come at them with pace, then we could we could get through them quite easily. But mm. we just didn't do that. Like we're kind of set up in the right way for for our benefit. Like we want to see attacking football, as you said before. We don't want to park the bus. It's boring. Like mm. the last few, the last four games, we've been playing a four three three which has been great. We've been really enjoying that style, but against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, we mm. just didn't open them up. Like uh, Sir Maximin and Almiron, the guys with the real pace, just just didn't go for it. And I, f- I fear that that's going to be the same way at Old Trafford w- because of the way it went at Stamford Bridge. Mm. We might even go back to five at the back, but we've got a few <sighs> defensive problems at the minute. Like we may not even have the personnel to fill up a five at the back. And the thing is, you guys like, okay, fair enough, you're playing very defensive football at the moment, but it's not like you don't have players that can play attacking football. That's, the, the, that's the problem. That's what we've been saying right. for the last year and a half. Like. The likes of St. Maximin, the likes uh-huh. of Almiron, uh, Fraser. I don't get why Fraser's not playing more. Like The guy, like, literally, uh-huh. if he puts in a cross, you literally have to tell him this year, just put him on the right-hand side, just let him spam in crosses and mm-hmm. talk Andy Carroll or whoever's tall, yeah. just put him there and let him mm-hmm. head the ball in. Literally, that's, it's easy. It's as easy as one, two, three. But mm. why he's not playing more, I do not know. And then, obviously, there's you guys having those shady transfers of like letting go of Yedlin and letting go mm-hmm. of Lejeune, and because I actually think he was a good defender. Oh, Lejeune's great. I, yeah, I don't know, man. I, obviously, it goes back to the structure of your club, and it's, it's as mm-hmm. much of a shambles as ours. But <laughs> yeah, it's just questionable things that are happening at Newcastle where you just think, what? It's, mm. it's weird, man. I think with most of it's kind of down to injuries. Like with Ryan Fraser, he just hasn't been fit all season. Like he had like a long layoff uh, towards the end of last season because he got mm. let go from Bournemouth mid-lockdown before the oh, before yeah. the restart. So he, he just didn't really have a lot of match fitness. And then at the start of the season, he was getting into it, but then picked up an injury. And then it was just more like that. It was just either injuries mm. or fitness issues. But the last four or five games, pretty much since the Everton game, four games ago, he's been back to his best self he's probably mm. best performance came against Crystal Palace and then we just haven't really seen much of him since like yeah. Steve Bruce mentioned that a few weeks ago he was like oh I'd love to get some Maximin and Fraser in the team together because they'd be unbelievable on each side like as soon as I can get them fit for one yeah. reason or another either injuries or fitness I haven't been able to do that mm. but the last three four games he literally has but he's been playing Dwight Gale or Joe Linton or someone else ahead of Fraser it's like what the <laughs> fuck are you doing man <laughs> like, that's how we should have set up against uh, uh, Chelsea. Like we've been playing with Miguel Almiron as a false nine, mm-hmm. and now without Callum Wilson, we've got Sir Maximin on one side, and who should be on the other side? Ryan Fraser. He's mm. the best winger. Stop trying to force uh, Dwight Gale to play there or Joe Linton mm. or something. Like, it's just just fucking stupid, man. 
It is, man. I, I totally agree. And mm-hmm. I guess for you guys now, it's just going to be about trying to keep your head above water, man, and stay stay away from that relegation zone. Because yeah. I think if, if you fall into that relegation zone, and thank God the team's at the bottom three are so bad that you're actually far from it. Yeah. <laughs> so they're starting you... to pick up points now. It's only a seven point difference now, but Fulham Fulham's been picking up points lately. Uh, West yeah. Brom got a point against you at the weekend, so yeah, they're starting to pick up points. Uh, Burnley as well, Brighton. Everyone's picking up points down there, so it's mm. tough at the minute. Like yeah, it's it's seven points the gap now. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be about winning games. I don't know what your schedule is looking like after you play us, but. Um... Yeah, it, I think it's it's about picking as many points as possible for you guys. Because mm-hmm. if you fall into that relegation zone, I fear that it, it might get sticky. Yeah, It might very, get really sticky. <laughs> very sticky. Uh, you touched on a few injuries that you've got going into the Sociedad game. Uh, yeah. Pogba, uh, Cavani, they're all out. Do you know how long them injuries will be? Will they be ruled out on Sunday? Um, I think Cavani, Oli said that he's not ready, so I don't know how long that is. Um Excuse me. I think. Uh, oh yeah, but Pogba. He said Pogba's not going to play until March, so we'll be right. without him on on Sunday, which is my big biggest worry because, like I said, if you guys sit back, I don't know where the creativity is going to come from. I really don't know. So that's why I said it might be a nil nil thing till like the seventieth minute, and then we just nick it like one nil in the end, maybe. So I don't know, man. Um, yeah, Pogba's out till March. Cavani and Van der Beek. Um, I heard just maybe knocks or something so mm-hmm. we'll wait and see what happens with them um if they're available on sunday or not so yeah that's that's the injury update what's going on with van der beek like w- like when we spoke about this back in october like it's more of a case that there's too many people in his position like he's not going to get ahead of bruno and he's probably not going to get ahead of pogba but mm-hmm. we're in the middle of february now and he still hasn't really been given a chance even in cup games he's only getting substitute appearances as is that just down, is still not being able to get in or is he just not performing when getting his 10-minute run out? Like, what's going on? I think with Van der Beek, it's, it's, he's not... I think Oli doesn't rate him as, as highly as other players in terms of, you know, there's this, this stigma that when you play in a Premier League, you have to be strong and tall and all these things. And Van der Beek is not your typical Premier League player, so a lot of people underestimate him because of that. Mm-hmm. Um... I mean, the guy is 20, I think 23. He's turning 24 in April. He's, he's not a kid anymore, man. He's yeah. a grown man. We're talking about some... Because for some reason, some people talk about him like he's an academy graduate who's just coming through the ranks. Like this, We're talking about someone who went to the Champions League semi-final yeah. with Ajax. And not just like in any fashion. They went to the um, semi-finals beating the likes of Tottenham convincingly, beating the likes of Chelsea convincingly, Beating the mm. likes of Juventus with with Cristiano Ronaldo, mm. beating, slapping the likes of Real Madrid at their own stadium, real, yeah. completely humiliating them, and he was a big part of that. And he scored important goals as well. So he's got the experience at such a young young age, and obviously doing bits with Holland as well. So the experience is there. He's got the technical ability, the awareness, the intelligence. So I don't. I think that compensates compensates. Sorry, with him not being the typical you know, United, DNA players, tall, strong, robust and all these things. But I just don't think he's being rated as highly. And obviously, I see this similar to the Fred situation. When Fred first came in, first season was struggling, second mm-hmm. season struggling as well, not getting game time with Oli. And to the point where we had so many injuries, we were forced to play him. So with the run of games that Fred got, he started to get better and better. So, yeah. And at one point, he was our best player for like two, three games in a row. And I feel like Van der Beek right now, okay, fair enough. It's a bit similar to the Fraser uh, situation. The um, Holland's competition got locked off very early in, in during lockdown. So he, had, he hadn't played not football since like January. He came in, but I think the best way to gel someone in or to, to give someone the opportunity to gel with the team is just by giving him game time. Just give mm-hmm. him 10 minutes here, 15 there, 20 there, 20 here, 20 there. Just let him play himself into form. But if you're just going to let him sit on the bench and, yeah, give, give him four minutes here and then eight minutes there, like he's not going to do nothing. Mm-hmm. I think you have to actually give him games. Let him gain his confidence back. Because I think right now he's just he's low on confidence because he's not getting any games. Yeah. Uh, he so, looks pissed off. 
he looks pissed, man. Like, that game we played against, uh, was it? Um, Someone in the cup, wasn't it? When he got taken yeah, off it was in a cup. Yeah, he, he knew. You could tell by his face. He knew he was, yeah. he was coming off. And that for me, I, f- I feel sad for him, man. I feel yeah. sad for him. So it's a shame. It's a shame. And it wouldn't surprise me if he if he asked for a move already in the yeah. summer. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't surprise they, me, yeah. Even if the club is coming out and saying all these things, nah, there's more to come for Donny. But we know that's just generic PR stuff. We know that. <laughs> yeah. What about Scott McTominay? He seems to be in pretty good form lately, having the season of his career. Yeah, he's having the season of his life, especially because he's scoring so many goals. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to see him more in that advanced role that he's playing. And I think I don't think he's a central defensive midfielder because I don't think he's got the passing range. I don't think his passing is that good uh, or as good as a Pogba or a Matic or a, whoever's playing in that position or if, even a Fred, to be honest. Um, but I think... He's good at, you know, playing in that midfield role as an advanced eight and then making those late runs uh, Mm -hmm. into the box and scoring. And he's been doing that, man. So um, credit to him, man, because I doubted doubted him a lot at the start of the season, even last season as well. Um, And I still think he's got a lot to to improve in his game. But yeah, man, he's he's been shelling it recently, bro. Just scoring goals and um, doing his job. So yeah, credit to him. But I just think he needs to improve on his his passing because sometimes it can be a bit horrible. Mm-hmm. We finally got a decent number eight that we've been calling up for in a long time. And Joe Willock, he was a January signing for us. He's been he's only played two games. It was tough to get into the game against Chelsea. He was probably mm-hmm. one of the few standouts, if you can call anyone a standout, because everyone was pretty shit. But yeah. in the Southampton game, he was he was unbelievable. So, but we're happy with that signing as a number eight going forward. Uh, he touched on Pogba being out, potentially Cavani, a couple others. So, can you give us a lineup prediction? Yeah, um, so I think the back four will be the same. Well, obviously De Gea and Goal. Oli's gonna be, he's gonna remain stubborn, so he's gonna go for that same back four that he always plays. Uh, Shaw left back, centre back partnership of Maguire, Lindelof, and then Wambasaka on the right. Um, playing Lindelof and Maguire means you have to babysit both of them. So <laughs> Tom and a Fred. Um, so that those are the two defensive mids, and then we'll play with three attacking mids. Rashford left, uh, sorry, Martial left, Rashford right, Bruno in the in the ten, and then we'll probably play Cavani up front. Um, if Cavani's missing, I think Rashford will go on to the left, Greenwood will go on the right, and then Martial will go up front. I think that that will be our stand. That's like our standard, our go-to uh, uh, formation. Yeah, it's good options though. Like if you've got one player out, like we've got Callum Wilson out, and we're just trying things like Gail and Joel in on like I'm I'm a big fan of Mason Greenwood. I think he's got a good future ahead of him, but he's not really getting as much game time this season as he was last year with Cavani coming in. I feel like Mason is he's such a huge talent, but I think under this coaching staff, he's not progressing. I feel like mm-hmm. this he's so raw, like his talent is so raw and he's so good with like his finishing mm-hmm. left foot, right foot, that it's almost like, yeah, just go out there and do what you do because we know you're good at it, kind yeah. of thing. It's not really going out there on the pitch and with with clear instructions. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's a bit sad because sometimes the game bypasses him a lot, even though he's still a very young player and he's got yeah. a lot to learn. But I feel like with a proper coach, he could have he could be at the level that Foden's at, for example. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. He's still young as well, though. And he was he like nineteen or something now? 18, yeah, 19? he's nineteen. Yeah, uh, he's 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 got time. He's he's a great player. Do, do you think a loan spell might do him good? Because we need a right-sided player at the minute. I would fucking love to get Mason Greenwood in on for the rest of the season. I don't think the club will. I don't think the club will let him go on loan because he's already played so many games with the first mm-hmm. team, and um, the manager believes in him a lot. So, uh, no, nah, I don't think he'll go on loan. I don't no. think so. It would really surprise me if he does. Yeah. Right. Time for a score prediction. I just think it's going to be one of them where you guys are going to sit back, mm-hmm. try and hit us on the counter. Um, we won't be able to break you down if you if you sit deep. So I'm going to go with the safest option and go 1-0 Manchester United. <laughs> mm. I think that's goals in it. I think we'll get one. But I think with Bruno and Rashford and stuff, I think you'll get a couple more. So I'm mm. saying I'd, I'd go with maybe if I'm if I'm being honest, I'd have to go with maybe a two or a three one Man United, unfortunately, because I think okay. Steve, like Steve Bruce just he can't play the big teams. He hasn't got a clue, especially yeah. going away. Like at home, we've actually got a pretty good record against like you guys, Chelsea, mm-hmm. like Man City. We got a draw last season. Like we do okay at home. It's just mm. going into into the Lions Den. It's just 
waving the white flag as soon as we walk out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, thank you very much for joining, bro. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. No uh, worries, man. Thank you for having me on. I really enjoyed it. No worries. You're also on the road to 10K, as are we. Yeah, man. Um, I'm less than 500. Yeah, less than 500 subscribers away from 10,000. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please feel free to do so. And uh, yeah, let's get to 10K. Yeah. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like this video. Go check out Aaron's channel. Subscribe to both. Get us both on a 10K. Uh, yeah. Thanks very much for the collaboration, mate. Your link will be in the description below. Come back on Sunday for all the pre and post match contents, live watch along, player ratings, all of that, all of that. Thanks very much for watching, everyone, and enjoy yourself.